Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a video talking to you about this gun here, which is a classic in, in firearms history, and that is the Beretta 92FS. Now, um, this is one that I picked up recently, uh, however, it's not the first Beretta 92 or M9 style of handgun I've ever shot, um, but it is definitely the one that I have shot the most uh, since it's the only one I've ever owned. Now, I'm sure that this is not going to be the first time you've ever come across the Beretta 92, if so. I don't know what rock you were living under because I mean these things have been the uh, at least up until very recently um, the service pistol for the United States military for for a very very long time I believe since the 80s they've been in movies and TV shows and law enforcement agencies all over the country and all over the world uh, for decades and decades but this is the first time that I've actually been able to own one now before we get too crazy with things, I'm going to go ahead and roll in some footage of me shooting this bad boy and then we'll dig a little bit deeper into the details of this gun. So as I said, this is the Beretta 92 FS. That does mean that there are some changes between this and what some of you who are in the military might be more familiar with. First of all, there's gonna be some polymer components, whereas in the military versions, they're all metal components. First of all, with a safety decocker here, these little levers are polymer, as well as the magazine release and a couple other little things going on here and there. But really at its core, it's the same as the US service pistol. Now more recently, especially with the Marines at least, I know for sure they were using the M9A1, which is basically the same thing, at least operationally the same thing. Um, it does add the accessory rail down here to be able to attach the light. And I believe, I know for sure the M9A3 has this, but I'm pretty sure the M9A1 also does. And that is a dovetailed front sight. Um, the one on the 92FS is um, just in the slide and there's nothing you can really do about that, at least not without the help of a gunsmith. So to run over the features of this handgun, uh, I'm gonna just start with the slide up here at the front. Um, we just have a standard front post with a with a dot. It's a really a three dot sight setup on this one. Um, some of the other models uh, in this family have a slightly different sight setup, but the one on the 92FS here is a three dot setup. So we have just a white dot on the front. Um, and really not, nothing else too special about that. I have seen some people do modifications of these where they'll have someone drill into it to put a tritium insert in there. Um, but as this thing came out of the box, it was just that painted white dot. Um, one of the more recognizable features of the 92 family of pistols and even a lot of the Beretta pistols out there is the completely cut away um, top part of the slide. So you have an exposed barrel. So as this thing opens up, really you just have the hood that comes over here for the front sight and then there's nothing on top until you get to the breech face and back. Um, I know there are people out there who will say that that can cause more malfunctions because dirt and gunk and everything can get in there. But in every torture test I've seen, that hasn't really been the source of the malfunctions. So um, I, I really can't complain about it. it. It's definitely an interesting look. It's definitely an iconic look in the um, Beretta family of pistols. Um, and I, again, I just think something very iconic and helps really with the M9A3 with some of the looks of being able to see that barrel in there. And then we come back here to, again, where the breech face is. Uh, we do have some um, serrations here on both sides to aid in getting a grip on the pistol. Um, however, you do have to be careful because of our slide mounted safety slash decocker. Now this is gonna be, again, one of the more iconic things when it comes to the Beretta 92 family of pistols. Um, in some models, it's a decocker only, but as the 92FS comes out of the box, it is both a decocker and a safety. So as you can see, we have our hammer back. If I just pull down on this lever, which is ambidextrous, 
you can see it drops the uh, hammer, obviously without igniting the round in the chamber. And then as it, you can see on this one, it stays down, which means this is now safe. So I can pull on this trigger all day long and nothing's gonna happen until I flick this thing up into the fire position. Now there are models, like I said, that are decocker only, and I'll probably talk about why later on in the video when I talk about some of the downsides of this slide mounted safety. Um, but you know, that's, that's most of what we need to talk about there. As far as the rear sight, that is actually dovetailed in, so it is a little bit easier to change out that rear sight if you so wanted to. Um, but again, there's not gonna be as many options as say some of the more pol uh, popular polymer frame striker fired guns out on the market. Now, as we start talking about the frame here, I'm gonna go ahead and start with what is the takedown lever for disassembly and cleaning. Um, if you are a fan of le the Lethal Weapon series, you'll probably no doubt be familiar with how this works, but we have a push button on this side and a lever on this side. If I depress this button on, the, on this side of the gun and pull down on the lever, that will allow me to just completely remove the slide. Um, this makes it very, very easy to disassemble and clean. I'm not gonna go too in depth on how to do that in this video. There's a lot of really good videos online um, already on how to do that. Um, so suffice to say, this is a very, very simple cleaning uh, and disassembly method. And then to reassemble it, I just slid it back on its rails and I'm just gonna push up on the lever here. And now we are all the way back together. So let's go ahead and talk about the trigger at this point. Obviously, again, with the, in, uh, the safe configuration, we can pull the trigger all day long, nothing's gonna happen. With it on fire, obviously, being a double action, single action, that first trigger pull is gonna be a long and heavy trigger pull. Um, I would have to guess probably 10 or 11 pounds, um, maybe a little bit more. Um, it's definitely not a light trigger, but being a semi-automatic pistol, after that slide cycles, now the hammer will be cocked, and then we have a nice, short, and crisp single action trigger pull, which is much lighter, much easier to use, uh, much nicer when you're trying to shoot for accuracy or groups or anything like that. Um, but you do have to get past that first trigger pull. Um, because there is no way to safely carry this thing cocked and locked, you definitely want to decock it before holstering, which means every single time that first shot is going to be a long, heavy trigger pull, even if you have the G conversion, which makes this into a decocker only and it goes back to, to fire automatically, you're still gonna have to deal with that long, heavy trigger pull each and every time. Now, I guess you could manually thumb that hammer back, which will pull that trigger back if you can see that there, um, but that's, that's a lot to ask uh, when you're worried about uh, someone shooting at you. So again, I guess you can do with that what you will, but um, that is one of the downsides of just really most double action, single action firearms that do not allow you to carry cocked and locked. So moving down the frame here, uh, we do have a magazine release, which is um, able to be reversed. So if you're a lefty, you can move that uh, button over to the other side. And again, being the FS model, that is a polymer button. There are extensions out there if you wanted to get a little bit more tactical with it. Um, but I honestly think it's pretty serviceable, serviceable out of the box. Um, the, the 92 FS and even the M9A1 are a little bit chunkier so not quite glock gen 3 as far as difficulty for me to get to that magazine release um, but it's not the easiest with the new m9a3 being the slimmer grip i find it a lot easier to get in on those um, so on this one it you know it's there i can do it um, but it's not the easiest it's not the hardest it's kind of right in the middle um, so that's okay um, we do have the factory grip panels on here there are a lot of aftermarket options for these you can get g10 grips you can get hogue over molded grips you can get pretty much whatever you want um, for me again these are perfectly serviceable as they come out of the box i do again prefer the beretta m9a3 since that's a little bit slimmer but really um, compared to some of the other options on the market this isn't too bad um, and it really does help give you a nice tactile grip on the gun and with that nice beaver tail here, we can get nice and high up on the grip and everything is good to go there. Um, the slide lock or release, depending on how you like to run your guns, um, is really well thought out and well positioned for a gun designed when this thing was. Um, it's really easy to get onto. So for those of you who um, like to run that slide lock in order to drop the gun, it is very easy to get on it as a righty with just that firing grip there. Um, 
As a lefty, it's not ambidextrous, so it's gonna be a little bit more difficult, possibly, uh, unless you are able to train around that. So again, just something to keep in mind there. Maybe not the most ambi-friendly option in the world, but you know, it is what it is. Now, moving on to the magazines, the factory magazines that come with pretty much all models of the 92 that I'm aware of are gonna be 15 round magazines. There are companies like Metgar that make 18 round magazines that will still fit flush. It's, so it's the same profile as these magazines will still fit flush, but they hold 18 rounds. Um, there are also extended magazine options out there. I think, again, Metgar makes like a 20 round one, which is gonna sit a little bit below the bottom of the grip. Um, but you know, 15 to 18 rounds isn't bad, especially the 18 rounds. 15 is a little low for a gun this size, being a full duty size gun. Um, but again, at the time, upgrading from the 1911 to one of these for the US military, you're already pretty much doubling your capacity. So 15 rounds is, is pretty acceptable in that context. So we've hit a lot of the high points here. So let's go ahead, roll in some more footage of me shooting this, and then we'll uh, dig a little bit deeper into my experience with this handgun. So those of you who have been following my channel probably know that I was in the Air Force, which means that I never shot one of these in uniform. Um, unless you're in very specific jobs in the Air Force, um, you don't even have to qualify on these anymore. I guess it, you used to always have to, no matter what your job was, but um, at least when I was in, uh, you didn't have to qualify on these. And even then, I only had to qualify with the M4, I think twice, once during basic and then once before deploying. Um, so. The, uh, my experience in, in uniform with this is, is pretty much zero other than handling our pilot's equipment, which they always had one of these. Um, I should say one of the family members of one of these, probably not the 92 FS specifically. Um, so where I really fell in love with these was the movie Die Hard, which I'm sure a lot of you can probably relate to. I've still only ever seen the original Die Hard, and as you know, John McClane was running a Beretta 92 in that movie, although it was a left-handed model, being that Bruce Willis is apparently left-handed, I guess, apparently. That's, at least that's what um, IMFDB, the Internet Movie Firearm Database, tells me. Um, but, you know, seeing the iconic movie poster and seeing the way he's able to take on Hans Gruber and his uh, cronies with a Beretta uh, 92 really uh, made me want to get one at, at some point in the future. And then again, if you've been following my channel, you probably know I've started working at a gun store here in Eugene, Oregon. And um, I always told myself, well, if, if one of these walks into the store used um, at a reasonable price, I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. And it just so happened that I was able to pick one of these up. So this this is a used one. Uh, it was not it was not new when I got it. Uh, so it's actually one of the ones that was made in Italy for what that's worth. I think most of the ones now, new production, are made here in the US uh, from Beretta USA. Um, but this is an Italian model. And it definitely shows the fact that it's used. I don't know what the person who owned this before me did to it, but it is all dinged up and scratched up all over the place. But that being said, it's still a very nice shooter. It's, it's been a pleasure to shoot. It's been 100% reliable through the several, several hundred rounds that I've put through this thing. Not quite a thousand, probably closer to that 700 round mark with like 350 of those rounds being just today. Um, but it's been a, a real pleasure to shoot. Again, reliable accurate, smooth shooting, just kind of a nice overall gun. But this thing is not without its drawbacks. So let's kind of go ahead and get into that now that we've kind of sweet talked this gun a little bit. So if we're talking pure practicality, we're not talking nostalgia, we're not talking looks, we're not talking cool factor, we're just talking pure practicality, there's not, that, not much that something like this offers me that I can't get from other guns that I already own that come in a lot cheaper than this. Specifically, in my case, the Glock 19. 
And in, in fact, this actually has some things that are actively detrimental in comparison to something like that. So first of all, as I already alluded to, some of the other later family members of this thing had the lack of an accessory rail here. Um, you cannot, at least not easily, mount a light to something like this. And if, in my opinion, if it's something I'm using specifically, especially for home defense, but something I expect to use for any serious use, um, I wanna be able to have a light on it. Being able to positively identify targets, especially at night in my house when it's dark and I'm half awake is extremely important. And I don't have that with at least the 92 FS. Again, there are other Breda models that have that, but not this one specifically. The other big downside, again, is the lack of ability to carry this thing cocked and locked and just the fact that it's a slide mounted safety slash decocker. So what that means is if you're someone like me who is always trained to come over the top for your reloads, when you slam in a new magazine, you come over the top to rack the slide. Obviously I had to drop it manually because I have an empty mag in here. Um, if you're someone who comes over the top to grab and release the slide and slingshot it, if you're not careful, it is possible to accidentally put this thing on safe when you're racking the slide. So if you happen to kind of get closer to the top and grab it, now this thing's on safe. So when I go to present the firearm, bang, 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 or at least click, 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 nothing's happening as that trigger is just moving around freely now. Um, and that is not a good thing. Now there are workarounds for that. There is the G model conversion, which will make this into a decocker only. So when the hammer's back and you pull down on the decocker, it'll automatically spring back up so that you don't have to worry about that being an issue. Um, but even then, still we're dealing with that long, heavy double action trigger pull on that first um, uh, first round. And that's still, to me, kind of a detriment. Now that being said, after that, it is a much nicer trigger pull on every subsequent round than a Glock 19 or really any striker fired polymer frame handgun. Um, but really that first trigger pull and the slide mounted safety without modifications can uh, cause some issues. Now, if we're talking just as the size of this thing, this is a significantly larger and heavier gun than a Glock 19, even though at least with factory mags, they have the same exact capacity. Now, as I already mentioned, you can get extended or larger capacity magazines that will still fit flush and even larger capacity magazines, but that's basically something I can also do with a Glock 19 if I want to run a Glock 17 magazine with a base plate extension, or if I want to run a 33 round magazine in my Glock, I can do that. I will also point out that being an all metal frame here, even though this is still nine millimeter, a lot more of that energy of recoil is being transferred into your hand because that frame isn't really soaking up any of that stuff. So all of that recoil is being transitioned into your hand. Whereas on a polymer frame gun, a lot of that recoil, not a lot, but some of that recoil at least is being absorbed by that frame. So in my opinion, and it, this is a totally biased opinion because I have thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds through this Glock 19, the one I'm carrying now. Um, so maybe it's just the fact that I'm more used to that recoil impulse. Um, but this has noticeably more recoil than my Glock 19. Now, in defense of my bias, uh, I did come out with my brother uh, a week or two ago, and I he, he's not used to shooting much at all. And I had him shoot my Beretta 92, had him shoot my Glock 19, and without any prompting or anything like that, no coaching or telling him what I thought, I asked him, what do you think had more recoil? And he said the Beretta 92. Um, now, with all that being said, uh, a lot of you are gonna say, well, that's totally unfair, that's an unfair comparison, yada, yada, yada. And yes, you are, you are right. Uh, it is an unfair comparison. But for people who are looking for a first defensive firearm, um, I just think that those are things worth mentioning. As great as a gun, uh, as great of a gun as this is, it is not without its drawbacks. And there are things that more modern guns, um, although you know the original Glocks kind of came out around the same time, that more modern firearms don't have the same issues with. Again, there are workarounds for most of the cons that I named with this thing, but again it's more expensive than something out of the box that's not gonna have any of those same issues. But if you're just looking for a really awesome range gun or one to add to your collection, or if you have the proper training and get those workarounds, a fantastic defensive firearm, the Beretta 92 family of guns is an absolutely amazing choice. I know there are gonna be the naysayers, even especially people who, who use these in the military. And uh, I think some of those criticisms are, are, are well-founded because of direct experience that they had with the guns. But I think we all have to recognize that um, guns that are in circulation in military use are not always taken care of. And because of that, you get excessive wear and parts breakages that 
a normal civilian who picks one of these up and does good proper maintenance with are not going to run into. So to kind of summarize my thoughts on this thing, again, I think it's a fantastic firearm for what it is. I think when you take into account when it was designed and what it was specifically designed to do, it does all of those things very, very well. Um, specifically for my usage, I um, am, I'm going to actually be trading in this gun for, for something else, which I'll touch on here in a second, um, because as much as I like it, I know there are other Berettas that are going to more adequately fit my specific needs, like having the, the accessory rail for a light and having either just the decocker only or the, like, the slimmer grip of the M9A3. I think specifically the M9A3 with a G conversion is gonna be about the ideal type of um, Beretta 92 style gun for me. So again, I'm gonna be trading this thing in and I do plan on getting another one of the Beretta family of guns at some point in the future. I've been lusting after the LTT models and again, the M9A3. Um, I just, again, for me, I, there, there are other things that I want more after um, having my chance to experience this gun. And in fact, I actually have a poll going on over on my Patreon uh, for them to pick what the next gun after this one is going to be, basically what I trade this in towards um, after after I'm done with this one. I'm, I am going to stick with a double action, single action, so it's going to be either, at least at this point, either the CZ P07 or the CZ P09, um, just because we're a master CZ dealer where I work, and I get a lot of time on those guns, and I really want to try one out. But anyway, back to the back to the Beretta. So if you have one of these uh, or any of the other family of Berettas, or if you have military experience with one of these or law enforcement experience with one of these, or you had to take over Nakatomi Plaza with one of these, definitely share your experience down below. I don't want people to just base their opinions off of what I have to think. And being that these things have been out for so long, there are tons of other reviews out there. Um, so definitely cross-reference what I have to say and compare that to what other people say and you know, weigh the pros and cons of what I've said versus what needs you're looking for and what you want out of your pistol, because odds are you're gonna want, you're gonna love one of these just fine. Um, so if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go throw those in the comment section down below. I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. Um, I always wanna say thank you to my patrons for making a video like this one possible. Being able to purchase the ammunition to put through one of these um, is not an easy thing to do, especially with the way YouTube's been demonetizing things. Um, and so my patrons are allowing stuff like this to happen. Because of that, I post all my content over there early. We do some exclusive content. Uh, we do uh, live streams. We have a Discord server set up. And then like I mentioned, um, I have a poll going on right now for a certain tier and above to be able to vote on what the gun after this one is gonna be. So if any of that stuff sounds interesting or you just wanna financially support the channel, definitely check out my Patreon page. And uh, again, I really do appreciate that. So anyway, with all that said, as always, I hope you got something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching.